Okay, we're going to do a fresh pasta today. Um, our ingredients for our egg pasta has five eggs, half a pound of bread flour. We want to use bread flour because it has more gluten than regular flour, so it will give us a better pasta. This is our semolina flour, which is the yellow coarse ground flour. Okay, and we have some salt. We want to, in baking, you always want to mix all of your dry ingredients together most of the time so that they get mixed evenly. Okay. And then you can do the same for your wet. Put all the wet together. Okay. The well method which we're going to do today is a more traditional method. You can make pasta in Robocoos, you can make them in KitchenAids, uh, any mechanical machine can make pasta. We like to show you the hand uh, traditional way, because that's the way things were done. Um, and it really eliminates the need for bowls and extra mixers, because you're using the same table that you're going to roll it out and cut on all in one shot. You don't have to do a lot of extra work uh, compared to setting up a machine. So, we have a clean and sanitized table. Take our dry mixture. Some people make 100% semolina, uh, or some people make 100% flour. You can mess with the ratio on your pasta as much as you want. You can work seasoning in the dry if you want as well. Same with the eggs. You can use less eggs, you can use whites, you can use water, uh, any mixture you want. Okay, so we're doing the well method. We can set up a little fortress here. Alright. Take our eggs. Quick mix. Get our olive oil. The key here is not to break the walls, but still incorporate the flour. Okay. Once it comes into a paste, then you can start mixing it by hand. Right. For coloring in your pasta, we mentioned in the lectures you can use a puree. This is where you would have your red pepper puree, or your spinach puree. Remember that's adding more liquid to the recipe so you need to compensate for that in your eggs or your water so it's not too wet. Okay. I was using a metal fork to be driving everybody crazy right now. Kind of the same method you would do if you're making some people make biscuits from scratch at home. This is how you do the biscuits. Alright. Okay. Let's get in there with our hands. Work towards the center of your table. You work towards the end, you're going to have flour and egg on the floor pretty quickly. So make sure you have it. Okay. When you're kneading, I'm always folding and pushing. I'm not turning it, I'm not spinning it. Uh, I'm just bringing it to the center and pushing it down. It's going to be pretty sticky until the gluten starts coming together. That's all part of the job. Okay, so fold and push. Get the hands cleaned up. The reason people use RoboCoos or 
blenders is because you have to develop the gluten in the pasta and that can take 15 minutes by hand. So in a blender you can turn it on or a mixer you can turn it on, walk away from it and it'll do the job for you. Uh, it's an easier way to do it. Okay. around and collect if you feel like it's too dry you can add a little bit of water if you feel like it's too wet you can add a little bit of flour either assembly or for it okay folding pushing This is not the finished product because you can see how easily it tears. Okay. So we're just going to fold it for a little bit more and we'll move on to the next part. But after about 15 minutes, it'll start getting a uh, real smooth texture, like a real fine leather. Uh, and it'll be nice and round. We'll shape it into a ball. Since we've worked it for so long, we have to let the gluten rest before we roll it. Okay. okay. We'll stop here. What we would do after 50 minutes just shape it into a ball like that, wrap it in plastic really tight, and burn it in the fridge for it to rest for 30 minutes. Okay. So after it's rested, we have this. All right. And it's nice and soft, it's pliable, and it's ready to be worked. Over here we have two of our pasta machines. This one is our electric pasta machine that saves you some time. These can run up to five, ten thousand dollars for some big ones. Uh, this one's a couple thousand, but it's a really nice machine. The one thing you need to know about pasta machines is never, ever, ever, ever get them wet. Okay? Because they have internal gears and mechanisms. If they get wet, they'll rust and they'll seize up and they'll break. And you've just broken them. Okay. So when we clean this today, just take a dry rag and a pastry dry pastry brush and you just brush out all the insides and buff it with the rag. This is our electric. If you want to save some money, this one is only less than $250 maybe somewhere. This is a hand table one. It comes with a little crank. And you would clamp it on the end of the table and it like that. And it has a little hole here to clamp it down to the table. Okay, that's so. What goes with this is the cutters. We have different types of cutters. After we roll it, we take a look here. You can see that this is a fettuccine cut, so it's a wider one. Okay, and this one more of an angel hair cut. It's a lot smaller. Okay. If you're doing things like lasagna or ravioli, you don't need a cutter because you're just doing sheets. So they're all set there. Okay. For our rolling, you always start on the thickest setting and work your way down. Okay. You can take a rolling pin and you take a piece of this off. Uh, you can take a rolling pin, roll it out, or you can just mash it with your hand. Get a nice and thick. Okay. So the thickest setting on this is a large number. It's number 10. All right. This machine will not work if this feeder is not on here because it has a safety that 
matrix. So it's not going on now. If you need some lubricant for the machine, use a little bit of semolina just to get it through. It shouldn't really stick too much. Okay. take this down to almost a
So I'm going to cut the ends off just to make it better. Okay. Should be able to get two. Lots of that a bit. I'm going to run it through one more time. Beautiful pasta. Okay, you can almost see my hand through it. Okay, but it's holding its shape. It's really nice and smooth, and uh, it's ready to be cut. Okay, I'm gonna put some flour on it. When I cut it, they tend to stick together a little bit, so you want to make sure it's got a little extra flour on there after you cut it. Fresh pasta, <coughs> dried pasta will take about 15 to 17 minutes to cook on average uh, on the high end. Fresh pasta will take 8 to 10 minutes sometimes. Okay, it doesn't take that long. Um, so all you're doing is cooking the egg. That's about it. So, turn it back on. Now I'm going to use the cutter. Just like that. Okay. If you want to make dried pasta, now you can take this and put it on a coat rack or coat hanger or something to dry it. Uh, for fresh, I just like to make little bird's nests. Add some more flour to it just to keep it there. Wrap it in plastic. And then we can boil it off as we need it. If you roll your pasta too thin, the cutter may not actually cut it. So if you notice that a lot of them are sticking, then you probably rolled it too thin. So. This will clump together when you put it in the water if you don't stir it. So as soon as you drop it in, you take your tongs and just kind of gently agitate it for a little bit until it'll naturally separate and then it's fine. You don't have to sit there and stir it, but it'll keep it from clumping together. Because when it sits like this, it'll clump a little bit. Um, so that's how to make fresh pasta. This is the scrap we can just roll back into the other one. We'll go ahead and cut the rest of this and then we'll cook it off.